upper back nice and tight, big toe down, proper brace, driving the knees forward all the way into the hole, keeping everything stacked, keep everything tracking nicely, maintain that tension in the hole, then reverse up out of there. It's like I'm loading a spring, holding the spring down, then releasing it. Um, and it feels really, really good. So um, on top of the benefits of that, the fact that we're having a pause will just allow me to keep my fatigue management regulated. It's automatically going to nerf the amount of load that I can actually push on this day, just so that when we're not getting too crazy with it, even if I'm feeling really good, that pause will always keep my objective loads at below a certain threshold so it doesn't carry over into fatigue later in the week. And then what you guys are going to see uh, whenever I take you through my day five and six, this video that you do, day three and four, is that my tertiary squats is now at SSP. Because the whole trend of me only doing a comp squat variation twice a week and having some type of variation for my third squat day, whether it's the second or tertiary day, still holds to be true for me because comp squat three times a week just doesn't feel great in my body. So, um, you guys will see that when we get to that. But yeah, that's what we had was pause squats, which felt really, really good. I had a top set of five yesterday at supposed to be RP7, it felt like RP6, six, six and a half, but you guys already know with my secondary days, the RP is more of a cap. On the primary days, I try to be anally true with RP. Don't be, don't overshoot it, don't undershoot it. On the secondary days, RP is more of a cap, meaning I won't let myself go past that RP. I'll let myself get up to it. If I'm a little bit under it, but I'm still progressing low each week, then I'm good. Uh, the first week, um, you know, post me, I did 330 pounds. Last week, I did 341 pounds. Yesterday, I did 363 pounds. So even if it wasn't quite the seven, that was still like a 20 pound increase from. Uh, the week before, so no issues as far as that. And then the accessory work is very simple, straightforward, just some nice leg extension and leg curls for that additional volume on my legs. You know, we're trying to grow these long femurs into some nice, decent sized tree trunks. Um, and then today is my um, my tertiary, my third bench day of the week. So you guys know that you know my first bench day of the week is my SPD day, my heavy um, top single fall flight, some light percentage based work. And my second bench day is just fault is like the day right after that Sunday, which is some slightly heavier bench work, like sets of five, so good volume. It happens to four by five, but um, you know it's obviously a little bit nerfed from what I did the day before. But it's very like based upon RP. And today, the third bench day, this day has gone from being like a secondary intensity day that was going into the meet back to being more of a volume focused day. So we're doing sets of seven for a top set, then some back down sets with a percentage drop, which feels really really good. The big thing with me when it comes to high rep work on bench is not rushing it's super easy and when i say not rushing i don't mean the pause but i mean making sure that i'm fully tensioned chest is fully elevated for every single rep whenever i rush that it just feels awful like my, i'll start to slip more my, my scapula will start to give i'll start to flatten out and then it makes those later reps that much harder but i really take the time to emphasize scapular tightness keep my chest elevated as well as a well tension pause for every single rep then I, it makes the reps far higher in quality, feels that much better, and makes it a lot easier to be true with the RPE as well as just make sure that my back downs feel really nice and smooth. So today I had um, an RP6, so 264 pounds for my top set of seven, and my back down sets with 242 pounds, and that felt really, really good to hit that for top sets of RP6, it was really, really good for me. And next, we got some good old accessory work. We got nothing but, I believe it's tens on all my accessory moves across the board. So like I said, volume work, let's get to crafting. Alright guys, so we are back at the crib. 
accessory work felt really really good you guys should already know at this point that when it comes to like my secondary days like those training days in the middle of the week i really like to focus on machine-based accessory work whereas when it's like early in the week you know right after my primary days that's when i like to do a lot more like the free weight stuff so like my heavier rows incline bench weighted pulse weighted dips um just because you know after i do my primary day work i won't be coming in for another you know week until i hit that primary day work again um so i'm able to push those kind of heavier harder accessories earlier in the week, whereas when I'm in the middle of the week and approaching the end of the week, getting back close to those primary days, I don't want to wear myself out too much. So that's why I like to go with more like machine-based movements. And of course, it comes down to the movement itself, right? Like um, flat dumbbell press, for example, is obviously a free weight movement. It's not, it's not a machine-based movement, but that's something that I can do that like, you know, two days before coming in on my primary bench day and feel totally fine because it's just not as like, you know, hard of a movement if you want to look at it that way. And ultimately, so long as I'm coming in, getting more workload in the muscle groups, uh, being sure the exertions that are set, then I'm going to grow regardless. So it's just about being smart with the setup of everything. And that's why, you know, I express to you guys all the time that, you know, like if you're doing your own program, if you have a coach, that the accessory work should be programmed within the entirety of the work you're doing with the SVD as well. Like, you know, giving your client their own SVD work, uh, but then like letting them just decide to do whatever for their accessories, they're either going to do too much or not enough towards even worth the time. So yeah, really happy with how accessory work went. Now, you guys see the title of the video. Your boy has a little announcement to make. I am officially one of the first ambassadors of the GBT brand, AKA get better today y'all already know man it's only right as the boy is the self-proclaimed captain of the dfw area of the gbt brand <laughs> and i do mean self-proclaimed it's not an actual title but y'all know what's up man y'all know it's true man like obviously russell's like the head captain of everything as well as the captain of the houston crew but y'all know your boy been representing for gbt since day one here in the dfw area no but i'm i'm very very grateful uh i was very humbled you know uh, when Russ asked me to become a part of the team, just because one, obviously, you know, that's my boy, support him and everything that he's doing. He's just very grateful to him for everything that I feel he's done uh, for the Palatin community in terms of helping it grow and, you know, get it to the point that it's at now. Um, obviously, you know, like you guys are, y'all already see, man, like I said, like I wasn't joking about the fact that, you know, y'all know I've been rocking the GBT just because I actually like the clothing, which you guys know for me is very important. If I'm going to take any type of sponsorship, I have to actually like support and care about like, you know, what it is that I'm using or wearing and then lastly man just you guys like the message man get better today like it's no simpler than that you guys know here on this channel we talk about the importance of you know honing your craft contentment and growth to me it's all the same thing like every single day is an opportunity to grow and to get better and to improve yourself in some way shape or another whether we're talking about lifting school work your relationships just trying to find those aspects of okay i'm doing great with this but i can be doing better hey i suck at this but i can be doing better that's the thing that's awesome about it. no matter how uh, good or poorly you're doing at something there's always room for improvement and just finding that contentment in the improvement I think is what life's all about it's not just about setting goals goals give us a direction but it's enjoying the process of reaching those goals and bettering ourselves to get to those goals so obviously the GBT brand is something that I mess with heavily so very very happy to be a part of the team so I just want to let you guys know that so with that being said if y'all want to use your boys code the Swole Fester, the next time you make a purchase GBT, go ahead and do it. Now, let me be very clear. This is not a discount code for you guys. It's not saving y'all any money. It's more so just a code to uh, show uh, the brand that you guys like, you know, oh, hey, we're coming from Marcellus. Like, hey, we're supporting Marcellus. And then, you know, it helps me on the back end, which obviously I appreciate. And the way I look at it, if y'all go buy GBT stuff anyway, and if y'all support your boy, go ahead and use the code. Hey, if you don't want to, that's cool, man. No hard feelings. Just keep watching the content, giving that like, you know, do a little something, something. No, but as always, you guys know that I appreciate your support in whatever form it comes, whether, you know, you're a client or you watch the channel or you follow me on Instagram, whatever it may be. So just another way you guys can support me if you so choose to. So I appreciate that. But yeah, that's pretty much it uh, for today. This video thus far has not been as long as what I thought it was going to be just because I've, I've approached it with a slightly different direction. So I think I'm going to take you guys through one more day. So instead of showing you guys day three and four, I'm going to also take you guys through day five tomorrow and then that'll be it for the video. And then in my next training video, I will take you guys through what day six, that final day of training looks like. But yeah, that's it for today. I'll see you guys tomorrow.
right, so as you can see, it is tomorrow, Wednesday, February 3rd, and uh, it's my church area squad day. So as I already explained yesterday, there's been a little bit of switch. I'm still only doing comp squad or a close comp squad variation twice a week, but instead of it being comp squad, then high bar SSB, then comp squad at the end, it's comp squad, uh, pause squat, and then the high bar SSB variation on this day. So we're rocking with SSBs right now. Um, now obviously, unlike before where it was comp squats in this church every day, I can't do my lows based off a of prescribed percentage because I don't know my overhead max on SSB. My best triple is 400 pounds, but rather than trying to figure out some arbitrary percentage to start with, it's just an RP based day. But I have a lot of fluctuations in terms of like what I can do. So for example, instead of like a, a fixed set amount, it's two to three sets. So depending on how fatigued I'm feeling coming in on this final squat day of the week, I can do two sets or three sets. And the rep range is four to seven. So if I feel like pushing high reps with slightly lighter weight, I can push closer to seven. If I want to go with slightly heavier loads, then I can do uh, closer to the four rep range. So last week, um, it was RP6, today it was RP6 to 7. Um, so last week I had a, I did uh, three sets of four and I did um, today's load for just the first set and it was really kind of X so I dropped it down for the last two sets. Today I was able to stick with um, the same weight I did for the first set last week for all three sets of four and it all felt perfect on RP as far as each set feeling like anywhere between RP6 to 7. So really happy with that. A couple of things you guys may have noticed is one, I'm still in the flats going into the meet. Even when I switched to flats for my wider comp squat, I stayed in the heels with the closer stance for my SSB slash high bar day. And that's mainly because I just didn't want to shift around too much um, going into the meet. I already made a big change by going wide and going to flats, so I didn't want to change the other variables. But now that it's no longer the meet, I'm like, okay, let me see how flats feel. Still using a closer stance on this day because uh, closer stance just feels better for my high bar SSB, and that still feels great. And the flats still feel much better than even what the heels did. Even the heels felt totally fine with the closer stance. Just because for me, a lot of it's about rooting, and I can just root and feel that pressure in my foot equally so much better than the flat. So, really happy with that. Anyway, next we've got some Romanian deadlifts and then accessory work. As I already mentioned, I believe a couple videos ago, we're still sticking with the same scheme as far as deadlifts. We're coming up to just one top set um, on my primary deadlift day with no back end on work doing RDLs on my secondary day, and then letting the rest of the walk be made up with proper leg and back accessory work. So yeah, let's get to it. It's really, really dope to go from hating RDLs, because like a long time ago I used to actually hate RDLs, to now them being one of my favorite movements to do. It feels super great on my upper back, my glute, my hamstrings. And I know the reason that I enjoy doing them so much is because my form has gotten better at them. Uh, my, form's better. my form's gotten better on them. And that's the thing, guys. Don't avoid stuff that you don't like. It's one thing if it's not really a necessity or you can do something in place of it that you enjoy more because you know the psychological aspect of training is important but if it's something where you know okay I need to get better at this don't avoid it. 
put time into it, put effort into it, set goals for the moment, and you will get better. You guys have already seen me do like, you know, up into the 400s on RDLs for like sets of fives. So now we're doing higher rep stuff. I'm looking forward to building my strength up in that rep range as well. And then we just had um, the standing vertical leg press. As I've said on the channel before, um, if you actually, you know, watch the channel on Train Absolute, I suggest you guys give that machine a try. If you have anything similar to it, try it. It's different from a hack squat. It does feel like a leg press, but I like it more than like the line leg press or even the normal seated one because there's like no pressure on your back. It's on the quad and it feels great. So yeah, the only real difference with that now is before I believe um, we were just doing like, you know, like sets of eights and like that. Now we're doing sets of 10 and with a brief pause at the bottom just to work the quads a little bit more. But yeah, everything's feeling good. This day is a very smooth and easy one. Like I said, for this first block post week thus far, things have been going really, really well. So I'm still going to take you guys through day six uh, at some point, probably the next video or two. But that is it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you did. If you're not, leave a comment down below. Let me know why you did better. Like the video, share, subscribe. Keep it simple, specific, scientific. I'll catch you guys later.